Hi, I'm Chris from ClearPath Robotics. Welcome to another video in our series on updating your TurtleBot 4 to the latest ROS2 Jazzy. In this video, we're going to cover how to connect your laptop to the robot using its access point mode, how to connect your robot to your local Wi-Fi network in case you want multiple computers talking to it, and how to pair your Bluetooth controller with the robot. In access point mode, the robot's hosting its own Wi-Fi network internally. You can connect your laptop to the Wi-Fi network called TurtleBot 4 to connect directly to the robot. Then you can open up a terminal and SSH into the robot by looking for its IP address of 10.42.0.1. If your computer doesn't have wireless, like it's a desktop that only has an Ethernet port, you can connect to the robot using an Ethernet cable instead. To do that, connect an Ethernet cable directly from your computer into the Ethernet port on the Raspberry Pi. To access the Ethernet port on the TurtleBot 4 standard, the port is directly available in the back. You may need to push a couple of USB cables gently out of the way to plug it in, but it's accessible quite easily. On the TurtleBot 4 Lite, you have to gently open up the rear tray, and then you can take your Ethernet cable and carefully plug it in. Once the Ethernet cable is connected between your computer and the TurtleBot, open up your wired network manager and configure your interface to have an IP address on the 192.168.185 subnet. Don't use the addresses 1, 2, or 3, as those are used internally by the TurtleBot. Anything else will work. I like using something at least 100 or above. Once your computer is connected to the TurtleBot, you can SSH in using the command SSH Ubuntu at 192.168.185.3. If you have multiple TurtleBots, each one will be hosting its own Wi-Fi network with the same name, TurtleBot 4. Obviously, that's not great because you don't know which robot you're going to be connecting to when your laptop connects to the Wi-Fi network. So instead, what we're going to do is connect all of our robots to our local Wi-Fi network. To do this, we'll SSH into each robot, and we'll use the TurtleBot 4 setup tool to connect each robot to our Wi-Fi by entering the SSID and the password. Of course, having multiple robots on the same Wi-Fi network also leads to its own problems. ROS2, unlike ROS1, topics are broadcast everywhere on the network. Each robot has its own set of topics, but those topics will have the same name. What that means is if we publish to command vel to drive one robot, the other robot might start driving. That's a, bit, a safety concern with large robots. Even with something like a turtle bot, it's obviously going to be disruptive to anyone else's experiments. Again, the TurtleBot 4 setup tool comes to the rescue. We can assign each robot a unique namespace. This will contain all of the ROS topics and services for each robot in a name, and then we can avoid any conflicts and any cross-communication between the robots that we don't intend. After you've set the namespace for your robots, the last step is to go to the Create 3 Setup page at the robot's IP address on port 8080. Then we need to configure the Create 3 firmware to use the same namespace that we've assigned to our robots. If we don't do this, the Raspberry Pi inside the TurtleBot won't be able to communicate with the Create 3, and the robot won't be able to drive anywhere. Finally, after you've set all of the namespaces up, the best thing to do is to reboot the robot by holding the power button and waiting for it to power off completely. Then put the robot on the dock. It'll automatically reboot, and it'll be using the namespace that you've assigned. Finally, when we reinstall the operating system on our TurtleBot, we wiped all of its previous Bluetooth connections, including the connection to its game controller. If you have a TurtleBot for Lite, it doesn't come with a game controller, but any off-the-shelf Bluetooth controller will work, like a PlayStation 4 or 5 controller or an Xbox controller. To pair the controller, first SSH into the robot and run the command Bluetooth CTL. This opens up the Bluetooth manager in Ubuntu and will let us pair the controller. Type the command scan on into Bluetooth CTL. Then take your controller and put it into pairing mode. The exact process for putting it into pairing mode will vary from controller to controller. With this PlayStation 4 controller, I hold the share button and the PS button and wait until the light starts flashing rapidly. Then go back to your terminal where you have Bluetooth CTL running. Look for a line that says wireless controller with a MAC address. Copy that MAC address and then run the commands trust, paste the MAC address, pair, paste the MAC address, and finally connect, paste the MAC address. Once that's done, the light on the controller will turn a solid color, usually blue, sometimes white or red, depending on the exact model of controller. Once the controller is paired, test it out by holding the left trigger button and using the left analog joystick to drive the robot.
Now that your TurtleBot 4 is connected to Wi-Fi and you've got the controller paired, the next step is to start using it. Check out the TurtleBot 4 documentation site, link in the description below, for more information on how to use Nav2 to create maps and navigate an environment. We also have another video on our channel demonstrating Nav2 if you want some more information about that. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel for more videos about robots. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in the next one.